Hi guys, my name is Jeff and welcome back to another episode of Wedding Tips. I may not know everything, but I will share with you to the best of my knowledge. In this episode, I'll be sharing with you guys about Guo Tali, as well as giving you guys a rough template of your wedding schedule throughout the actual day. First of all, Guo Tali is a ceremony where both couples' parents meet each other formally and is what symbolizes the groom's sincerity towards marrying the bride. It usually takes place two to four weeks prior to the wedding. Different dialects have slightly different items so you can check it out here to see what is your dialect requirement for the Guo Tali. Try to get everything in pairs or even number as usually half of it will be written back to the groom's family during the Hui Li. So after you have done your Guo Tali, you will then have this ceremony called Hui Li or returning of gifts in English. The bride's dowry or Jia Zhuang will also be presented during the Hui Li ceremony to the groom's family to stimulate wealth and prosperity of the bride's family and bless the couple's marriage with ultimate happiness and prosperity. The dowry items include dowry from the bride's family, gifts for the groom such as watch, belt or wallet with an ang pao inserted, two bottles of orange juice, a portion of the quota li items, huat kui, one ruler, a red umbrella, five pieces of descendant pale set such as baby bathtub, wash basin, mug, tray and potty, one tea set for the wedding tea ceremony, a set of bed sheet and duvet for the bridal bed. A dining set consisting a pair of chopsticks, spoons, bowls and plates. A pair of bedside lamps. A pair of red wooden clocks or bedroom slippers. Sugar cane for the Hokkien people. Pants or suit for the Cantonese people. For people who are more pantang, they can consider getting a geomancer to calculate the best date for you to do this ceremony. Otherwise, you can just do it when everyone is free and available. To find out more about the Guo Tali and Hui Li, you can head to this website. If you still don't know what to do, just head down to a shop selling wedding stuff in Chinatown and the aunties over there will guide you on the stuff that you need. Next will be the wedding itinerary on the actual day. Normally, the bride will require around 2-3 to three hours of makeup, hairdo and changing of gown depending on the makeup artist, while the groom only needs around 30 minutes to 1 hour. I cannot stress this enough, please give yourself 15 minutes of grace period for each activity as 10 out of 10 wedding itinerary snowboard. Everyone thought they can finish in time, but in reality, no. So the day begins at around 5 to 6 am for the bride. For this video, we will just use 2 hours of makeup as an example. Feel free to make adjustments according to your own wedding programs. So at 6 am, makeup artist should arrive and do the makeup for the bride. At 7 am, Bridesmaid arrive at the bride's house to have breakfast and prepare if there is any gate crashing games. Groom will wake up and get ready. Groomsmen arrive at the groom's house to have breakfast and decorate the car, or they can do it the night before. Photographer and videographer arrives at the bride's house. If you have two photographers or videographers, you can always request one to come over to the groom's site to take a few shots. You also don't want the photographer to come too early, so usually 30 minutes to 1 hour before the bride is ready so they can take some shot where the bride does not look like she just woke up. They also have time to take a few shots of your wedding items such as wedding rings, gown, shoes and etc. They also can photograph your bridesmaid preparing the games for later use. At 7.45am, grooms will leave and head towards the bride's house. Usually from one place to another will take around 30 minutes long. However, Give yourself some time to wait for everyone, walk to the car park, start the car, drive down, a bit of jam here and there, reach the bride's place and find parking lot. So add another 15 minutes to your overall timing. At 8.15am, bride's parents put on the veil for the bride and the bride is ready without worrying about the timing snowboard. At 8.30am, groom arrives at the bride's house. If you want to horn, please just horn 3 to 5 times and not unlimited times or a long horn. So at this time, someone is already at the car park to help the groom to open the car door. Groom will then give him an ang pao as a token of appreciation. Gate crash begins. Usually gate crash will last around 30 minutes. At 9am, groom finally sees his wife for the first time. He will then proceed to unveil and kiss the bride. Groom will then help the bride to wear her heels or shoes. But this is optional depend on your traditions. At 9.15am, Couples will pai pai or pray depending on the traditions. After that, it will be group photo and eating of tang yen. Eating of tang yen is also optional. So the couple will first take photo with the bride's parents, followed by family including siblings, grandparents, relatives and friends. Tea ceremony will usually happen after coming back from the groom's place. This will usually last around 15 minutes and then adding 15 minutes to your grace period so it will take around 30 minutes. 
However, if you ended up having extra time, you can always have a short photo shoot around your place. So no harm having extra time. At around 9.30 to 9.45, couples leave the bride's place and then head to the groom's place. At 10.15am, couples will arrive at the groom's place. I personally find it very wasted that the couple did not get to have a group photo with the groom's family for the bride's first outfit. So maybe couples can spend 10 minutes to take photo with the groom's family before changing to their second outfit. Couples can then proceed with change to second outfit such as koa and then proceed with the tea ceremony. For tea ceremony, usually parents will be the priority followed by the grandparents and then relatives according to seniority. After that, the couples can take group photo with the groom's family again with their second outfit. So group photo takes around 10 minutes, changing of second outfit takes around 30 minutes, tea ceremony 15 minutes, group photo 10 minutes, and 15 minutes of grace period. Hence, the next timing to meet will be 11.30. Any extra time can always have a short photo shoot around the place. At 11.30 am, couples leave the groom's place and head back to the bride's place. At 12 pm, couples arrive at the bride's place and proceed with the tea ceremony and group photos. Everything should last around 1 hour until 1 pm. As this is a lunch time, do prepare lunch for your family and friends. Usually people will cater buffet or cook some meals for everyone who came. If you do not have a lot of guests, you can consider ordering bentos from the buffet caterers as bento are catered to fewer people. So at this point, if you have extra time with the photographer and videographer, you can head out to nearby areas for a nice photo shoot and then take a break until your lunch or dinner banquet. For lunch or dinner banquet, it is much more simpler. Couples can start preparing to make up one to two hours before the reception or RM ceremony. For RM, do remember that both couples and the witnesses are required to bring along their ICs. However, you can also log in to your SingPass and produce your electronic IC if you really ended up forgetting about bringing your IC. After the whole RM, couples will usually have 15 to 30 minutes to hang around and mingle with the guests before the wedding reception starts. So the flow of the banquet usually goes like childhood montage, first marching, cake cutting, start eating, showcasing of same day edit video, second marching, yam sing, thank you speech, and then table to table photo taking. So pretty much I have never heard from any couples who did the same and said that they have enjoyed the wedding or banquet fully due to how busy they were changing gowns and suits, marching in and out. If I have to give one tip to anyone, it will probably be getting someone whom you trusted to help you. Someone who can be the point of contact for all the vendors. It may not be just one person to help you. It can spread amongst the groomsmen and bridesmaids. Having a wedding can be very stressful and most couples ended up did not enjoy their wedding due to tremendous amount of stress. So to prevent this from happening, I would say get your groomsmen or bridesmaid to help you as much as they can. Last but not least, try not to drink too much and puke all over your suit and gown if they are rented. If not, you will puke again once you saw the fees of damaging the wedding gown and suit. And that's all for this episode of Wedding Tips. If you like my video, do like, share and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.